I've lived in Japan for about two and a half years now, and when you live in a foreign country for this amount of time, you will slowly but steadily change. You don't notice it until you go home on vacation. That's what I did, and therefore here are my reverse culture shock moments going to Germany from Japan. First, language. In Japan, in my everyday life, I speak English, my second language, or my third language, Japanese. This is nice for improving my Japanese and not so nice for improving my English because everybody here has an accent, just like I do. And it also requires more effort from my side. As a result, in Germany, I have much more energy and need less sleep. There, six hours are sufficient, whereas in Japan, I need about seven or eight. Every human being needs to visit the bathroom every now and then, and Japan is well known for its superior or at least high-tech toilet seats, having bidet functionality, being heated and sometimes even more. The German toilet seats, on the other hand, are a little bit more minimalist, having only the ceramic seat and that's it. And if you are coming to Germany on a cold day and sit down expecting a warm heated seat as you do in Japan, you are in for a surprise. Also, the cleanliness in public toilets is not on par with the Japanese one. For example, this one is on the Munich airport, which I used to think of as very clean. And this one is in an ICE, a German high-speed train. So to summarize, German toilets are cold, dirty and don't even have a bidet. Coming back to the trains. The train system both in Japan and Germany is excellent, but in different areas. In Germany, the train system is very widespread. So if you go to a small city with 10,000 or even less inhabitants, you probably still have a train station. Usually this is also supported by a network of buses. In Japan, this can be a little bit more difficult. For example, I lived in Nagano city for one and a half years. And while it has a train station, the bus system is not as good and therefore most people own a car. On the other hand, trains are very on time, very punctual. This allows for some extremely precise scheduling, with some of the local trains going as often as every two minutes during rush hour. In Germany, the contrary is the case, with only about 75% of the long distance trains of the country reaching its destination on time in the last year. This makes traveling in Germany with many changes extremely stressful to me, because I always have to worry about my connecting train. As a result of this, because I'm used to trains being delayed and having issues, I'm usually at least one hour early when I have an appointment in another city in Japan. Germany, for the most part, has one company that's in charge of the entire train system and they seem to have some issues improving the service quality and reliability. A good example would be the vending machines, which are also a prime example of bad usability, overcomplicated processes and outdated technology. For example, when I bought a ticket for 27 euros and paid with a 50 euro bill, I received the change 23 euros in coins, because that's all the vending machine is capable of. Japanese vending machines, on the other hand, are extremely simple and efficient. For example, charging my C-card takes about 20 seconds and I get my change in coins and bills. Also, the ticketing system is very simple. You just look where you want to go and what it costs, select it on the vending machine, pay and you're good to go. Not 10 masks asking you where you want to go, when you want to go, when you want to come back, with how many peoples you're going, how many of these peoples are children, if you have a membership card, method of pay and more. Japan is an island nation with about 126 million peoples living in. Most of the country's area is covered in mountains resulting in the valleys often being densely populated. This leads to things like gardens being a luxury and houses often being built very close to each other, literally this close to each other. Not having these restrictions, seeing white streets, gardens everywhere, houses not touching each other in Germany is just fantastic. Also, because Japan consists of islands, most of the vegetables and fruits are either grown within the country or are imported at rather high shipping cost. This is not the case in Germany, making them much cheaper and more accessible to me. Something I really enjoy in Japan is how serious everybody is about their work. What I enjoy in Germany is how much time everybody has besides their work. Working for 8 hours, 
then going home, meeting friends, having a hobby or following other passions. Seeing many people living their life like this is just great to me. Staying at social norms, both in Germany and Japan, drivers are required to stop when a pedestrian wants to cross at a zebra crossing. However, only in Germany they will reliably do so. Also in Germany, cars drive on the other side of the road, on the right side. People are also allowed to smoke on the streets. In Japan that's forbidden in most of the areas and while I should have known, I was surprised negatively about this. There are many many more things such as the speed of internet, the service quality and shops closing on Sunday, but that's actually not something that came as a surprise to me. Living in a country you like while liking your home country equally is hard, but it's also great. There will always be something you're missing, but on the other hand, there will also always be something you love. I decided to focus on the latter. I've made a video about culture shock when coming to Japan. If you want to see it, you can click here. If you already have seen it and want to see something else recommended just for you, you can click here. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time.